It's questions, answers, and comedy. You look fit as f. Thank you. Why don't you dress like that on this morning? Philip Scofield, I'm a f***ing heart attack. <laughs> Welcome to Watch Mojo UK, where today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 greatest British panel shows. Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. For this list, we're topping up on telly to take a look at some of the best comedy quiz shows on the box. Number 10, Shooting Stars. A surreal slice of comic buffoonery to start, courtesy of Vic Reeves and Bob Mortimer. Shooting Stars began life as a one-off pilot in 1993, before returning for a full series two years later. Ulrika Johnson and Mark Lamar served as team captains in the initial run, with regulars Jack D and Johnny Vegas joining the series later. Stop. Look at that! Two reindeers going with Santa! Two of them left behind and confused! <laughs> That's what's wrong with society! Anarchic and suitably slapstick in almost equal measure, the series is most remembered for its Dove From Above round, and Matt Lucas's man with the scores, George Dawes. Yes! Number 9, A Question of Sport Scoring more than 45 series since launching back in 1970, A Question of Sport holds the Guinness World Record for the world's longest-running sports quiz show. Hello, welcome to A Question of Sport, and Ian Botham's win last week means he's now level with Bill Bowman. Five rounds each. Originally hosted by sports presenters David Vine and later David Coleman, former tennis champ Sue Barker has anchored since 1997. The time was up, sadly. Gosh, you were doing your best to throw it away. <laughs> <laughs> And the show has seen a wide range of team captains from a variety of sporting backgrounds, with the likes of Phil Tufnell, Matt Dawson, Ali McCoist, and John Parrott occupying the hot seats in recent years. What's this? In the 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 Featuring ex-cricketer Andrew Flintoff and retired footballer Jamie Redknapp, Jack Whitehall's another regular, while John Bishop and Georgie Thompson were prominent personalities in past series. I'm all right, Jimbo. Sweating me bastard tits off. <laughs> but I'm going to be all right, because I had a great time performing with my pal Fred. Seen by some as the naughty's answer to the 90s favourite They Think It's All Over, it's an award-winning blend of obscure sports trivia and outrageous challenges. <laughs> Number 7, Would I Lie to You? With David Mitchell and Lee Mack leading the line, Would I Lie to You sees two teams reveal a variety of unusual facts and embarrassing stories to one another. But are they telling the truth? I once returned a t shirt to a shop, furious that it had shrunk in the wash, only to discover mid complaint it was in fact my seven year old son's. <laughs> The lineup's been through some big changes, with Rob Brydon replacing Angus Deaton as host after two series and Alan Carr opting out after just the pilot. The majority of, of kind of uh, solid faecal matter with an owl comes out of its mouth. Yeah. Mm. No, we're dealing with a very sick owl. <laughs> <laughs> but it's all turned out for the best. And that really is the truth. It was... True! Yeah. Well Number six, the big fat quiz of the year. An annual anarchic pub quiz style panel show, Big Fat Quiz always proves a TV highlight over Christmas and New Year. <laughs> Jimmy Carr plays Master of Ceremonies, while the likes of Jonathan Ross, Richard Ayoade, and Noel Fielding frequently feature on a six strong guest list, with the comic contestants rarely playing by the rules. Does it say your mum? No, seriously, though. Is it your mum? <laughs> I saw your mum in BQ, so. <laughs> And fans don't have to wait a whole year between episodes either. Thanks to a raft of one off specials, the cultivated chaos has spread to other corners of the calendar too. Poncho, tell him he's lost control of the show! You've lost yeah. control of the quiz, Bong! <laughs> Number 5, Mock the Week. Created by Dan Patterson and Mark Leverson, the duo behind the classic improv comedy game show, Whose Line Is It Anyway? Mock the Week takes topical news and squeezes every inch of satire out of it. Now, that would be alright if it wasn't for that, like, the article actually came with a giant photograph of me <laughs> next to the article. <laughs> under the word big head. The show has helped to launch the careers of many now famous comedians, including host Dara O'Brien and panelists Frankie Boyle, Russell Howard and Andy Parsons. It was after I heard the buzzer, 
<laughs> that I realised the one thing I hadn't heard at the Olympics, right, was f*** it. <laughs> and it has courted its fair share of controversy, with Boyle proving easily the most controversial character during his time on the panel. So, to summarise, there's no evidence, but he does look a bit rapey. <laughs> Number 4, 8 out of 10 cats. To a series set around questions gleaned from national surveys and opinion polls, with Jimmy Carr once again setting the agenda as host. At 74, Sean Connery now has a whole new range of gadgets. Pay attention, Bond, this isn't a normal bath, you can walk right in. <laughs> Rob Beckett and Ashling B debuted as team captains in 2016, but longtime fans have also seen Dave Spikey, Jason Manford, and John Richardson as regulars, as well as Sean Locke. Who was an ever present for the show's first 10 years. Is it noise? Is it noise? Is it noise? Cats has consistently proven one of Channel 4's biggest draws, with the show's popularity inspiring an equally well received crossover spin off, 8 out of 10 Cats Does Countdown. Holly says her days at Cambridge were the most boring time of her life. Well, that's all about to change as you're on John's team tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Number 3, QI. From the creative minds behind another British TV classic, Spitting Image, QI has carved its own niche into primetime TV schedules. And lights out at 8 o'clock sharp in the evening. Rubbish being a pile! Oh, no. <laughs> Previously hosted by Stephen Fry, with Sandy Toxvig taking over in 2016, this quite interesting panel show boasts a unique and mostly incomprehensible scoring system, with points awarded for the most interesting answers and deducted for obvious ones. I would make that entirely a correct answer if it wasn't so horribly wrong. No. <laughs> Alan Davies is the only ever present, but most major comedians have tried their hand at QI before. It's a badge of honour for any serious panel show star. Yeah. It's extraordinary. Yeah. It's slavery by the back door. It, it, exactly what it is. Which is another video that I've got. <laughs> <laughs> Number 2, Never Mind the Buzzcocks. This music led series, with its Sex Pistols inspired name, earned a widespread reputation for dry, sarcastic humour and famous takedowns of several celebrity guests. Isn't She Lovely by Stevie Wonder, who in 1973 was involved in a serious car crash. In fact, the crash was so serious that at one point his whole life flashed before his ears. <laughs> First hosted by Mark Lamar, then Simon Amstel, and finally Rod Gilbert, Amstel's reign is especially remembered for various controversies. I don't the believe you've had nothing done. But you look so different to Michael. The comedian's natural ability to rub guests up the wrong way created many memorable moments, including various run-ins with Noel Fielding and Preston's infamous walkout. <laughs> Like, oh, what? Sorry. oh no, Preston, no, come no, on. No, I'm seriously going on. No. Preston, yeah. we're having fun. We're having All right. Off. Come on, Preston. Number one, have I got news for you. As one of the earliest shows of its type, Have I Got News For You is actually inspired by the long-running radio series The News Quiz. It's a bad sign when a cough sweet goes down better than you do. <laughs> <laughs> With Private Eye editor Ian Hislop and comedian Paul Merton serving as captains throughout, Angus Deaton hosted from 1990 to 2002, before the show became famous for featuring guest hosts, following Deaton's departure. Going on and on, it's all Brexit's fault. <laughs> God! <laughs> <laughs> Known for sailing close to the wind regarding matters of libel, slander and controversy, this series set the format for contemporary TV panel shows, and it still hasn't been bettered. So am I the only one who could bear to watch? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from WatchMojo UK and subscribe for more great content.